Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Common Q with yours truly, Mr. Mike Bell. Today we are going to be showing you guys how to set up your big green egg for successful smoking. That's right guys, long-term cooking on the big green egg. With that guys, let's get right into it. Bam! Look at that nasty white smoke, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Common Q. Like I said, today we are going to be setting up the big green egg for low and slow cooking. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Throughout the channel, we'll be using this big green egg for a lot of stuff. This right here, guys, is the large. It is not the XL. It's relatively old. I've been cooking on this thing for a long time, guys. But today I wanna to show you guys how to get this thing dialed in. The appropriate amount of charcoal, wood selection, what we're gonna use as a fire starter, how we're gonna set our you know, our upper vent and our lower vent, guys. We're just gonna make sure that this thing is dialed in. So in order to get this thing set up for smoking, guys, we wanna take out the grill grate and we also wanna take out the convector or the plate setter. So we'll go ahead and take those things and just set them aside real quick. Now I've got mine set up with the charcoal basket. That just makes my life a hell of a lot easier. It'll make your guys' life a lot easier too. It's as easy in and out with the charcoal basket, guys. It's gonna say it's gonna help clean up, it's gonna help so much more. But other than that, this is a basic big green egg large. Now the last thing we want to do is make sure that our ash trap is cleaned out and that our vents are all the way open. So with that, we'll go ahead and open our main vent and our grate. Now I've also got this ashtray in here, guys. This has already been cleaned out. You don't have to have one of these. It just makes my life a lot easier. Uh, but what I wanna show you is we're gonna go ahead and keep all of this open. We will go ahead and close this just so that no coals or any charcoal comes out. Um, but right now everything's cleaned out and that is key. We always wanna start with the cleaned out grill. All right, guys, now that we've made sure that the big green egg is completely cleaned out and it's ready for use, let's go ahead and start putting everything back together and build up our nice coal bed. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and put our uh, charcoal basket back in there, and then we're going to fill it up using some premium charcoal. Now, it doesn't matter, should I say, you don't have to use big green egg charcoal. I use it just because I've been using it a long time. It is consistent, but you could use Fogo. You could use Royal Oak. You could use a lot of stuff like that. But what's important is you get some stuff that's kind of slow burning, right? And then solid lump charcoal made from good quality hardwoods. So we're gonna go ahead and take this and fill up the big green egg. So as you can see, we've got the charcoal up to about this top ring here. This is where I like to be. Uh, any of you uh, egg owners already know that it's really easy to kill this charcoal once it's lit. I never wanna run out, especially mid cook and especially if I've got an expensive piece of meat on here like a brisket. So I want to make sure I've got enough charcoal in there to get started. All right guys, now that you've got a good charcoal bed kind of layered up inside your egg there, you've got a couple of options to go ahead and get those charcoals ignited. First thing you don't ever want to do is use lighter fluid. It's not going to help you. You're going to taste it in the meat. You're going to contaminate your egg, if you will. Uh, what I prefer to do, if you've got time, you could light a chimney. I don't like using a chimney on a big green egg because I want to slow burn my charcoal. I want the minimal amount of charcoal lit right off the bat is necessary to get this thing sustained at about that 225 to 250 temperature. So with that guys, I've been kind of turned on to these Go Fire fire starters. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pan in on that. Right, these are just like little twisters, uh, but you could always, I used to use these guys. These are the uh, big green egg charcoal lighters, charcoal starters, whatever. But I've been, I've been really turned on by these. I picked these up at Ace Hardware. So what we wanna do is go ahead and grab a couple of these little twisters right here and go ahead and get them in the charcoal and get them ignited. All right, like I said, guys, we just want to go ahead and bury a couple of these uh, charcoal starters, these little twisters made by GoFire. They're pretty simple, very easy to use. We just want to put a couple of them in here and go ahead and get these things going. So you can get one of these. You can pick up one of these uh, torches. Again, I picked this one up at Ace. It was about $25. It's a game changer. Uh, it really keeps you from having to use a lighter or anything else like that. It's pretty cool, too, and we use it for other stuff on the channel like you know, searing our steaks when we we're doing a reverse sear or something like that. So make sure you guys subscribe to find out more about that. And once you got the fire starter starter guy, we just want to go ahead and set a little bit of this charcoal on there. We don't want to choke them out a whole lot, but we want to give it opportunity. 
So we're gonna go ahead and let those bed, that bed of charcoal go ahead and get started up. Uh, we're gonna let this thing sit for a little bit, start to establish that coal bed, and then we'll be right back to go ahead and prep it for long-term smoking. All right, guys, so it's been about, eh, about 15 minutes here since we got that coal bed kind of started. As you guys can see here, we've got a pretty good fire going. Um, we're about ready to start dialing this thing in for low and slow cooking. Part of this is it's starting to get really warm in here. We wanna go ahead and get our plate setter set in this now, all right, so that it can come up to temperature. That way, whenever we open this thing up to put our wood chips in and get this thing smoking, we don't gotta worry about this thing heating back up. So we're gonna go ahead and put that thing in here now, the plate setter. We're gonna go ahead and close the grill down, all right? Let's go ahead and lock this down. What we want to do is make sure that our upper vent is all the way open. And then our lower vent, now that we've got the plate setter in there, we want to go ahead and take this lower vent and we want to close it down to where it's just about an inch. All right. So let me show you what that looks like for me. Just about an inch, not, not too much. We want to really control the amount of air that we have coming in. And it's at this point, we're really going to start watching that temperature. We're going to let the plate setter come up to temp. We're going to let the in, inside of the grill come up to temp. And then we're going to be watching this, this uh, temperature gauge here. Now I know it's running hot right now. We're starting to push up toward 300 degrees. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and let this thing start to stabilize. And then I'll show you how I finish this up and get it set up to start smoking. All right, guys, now that the egg is starting to get into that smoking range, we're hovering between 250 and 300 right now. I'm going to adjust the airflow down. I'm going to close that lower vent just a little bit, and I'll show you guys that. But right now, it's time to go ahead and start getting the wood on the fire. That's what's going to help create that smoke that we want while we're smoking meat. Now, some people will tell you to use chips. I do not recommend using chips. I recommend using chunks. All right. This is something, again, you can pick this up down at Ace Hardware. It's made by B&B. Today we're going to be using pecan wood. Uh, I like pecan with my brisket, so that's what we're going to use. So let's go ahead and get some wood on the fire. Bam. I'm going to go ahead and get the egg open. I'm going to grab the plate setter. Now it is going to be hot. All right. And then we're going to set some chunks. Now, where we set the chunks is strategic. I don't want all the smoke to happen right off the bat. I don't want to introduce a whole lot of heat into it. So I'm going to set these kind of around on the outer edges here. Maybe three, four, five chunks, something like that. Nothing too crazy. Throw in a couple of the little ones in here just so we get some early smoke. And then just kind of set these around the perimeter. So as we start cooking, these things will start igniting and we'll get that good smoke that we want on this fire. Got our plate setter back in and we are about ready to go. that nasty white smoke guys that's right the white smoke is what you don't want we want that to stabilize we want that to turn into like a blue smoke is what they call it or even a clear smoke that white smoke man it is just kind of taint your meat you will never it's, it tastes accurate it smells like a burning house or if you're burning pallets or something like that that is not what you want guys we are going to let this smoke start to stabilize guys once everything starts setting in there the way we want it we'll go ahead and then we'll get ready to put our meat on there all right guys so this has been sitting here for uh, I guess about 20 minutes now we've really dialed in the smoke I went ahead and I adjusted that top vent down to where it's about half of an inch open okay uh, as you can see here we're holding pretty well you can look at this dial but more importantly I went ahead and I put a probe in there on my Inkbird uh, digital probe uh, we're holding about 270 and we've been here for like I said about uh, about 15 minutes, we've been at 270. We did creep up a little bit. We're pushing about 280. I backed it down a little bit. And then our lower vent, we're at about a 16th of an inch open. Now that's probably how we're gonna hold it until some of those coals start to settle in. Once the coals settle in a little bit more, I'll probably have to open that lower vent up a little bit, but I don't want this thing going up much past 270. Uh, I prefer it to be about 250 for what we're trying to do, but all in all, guys, yeah, that's uh, that's how I set up the smoker for low and slow smoking. So there you have it, guys. That's how I like to set the big green up for low and slow cooking, all right? Uh, start with the good bed of premium charcoal. We want the hardwood stuff. Um, let it start to come up to temp. We're using fire starters there. None of the, none of the liquid stuff, guys. You don't want to put that in your big green egg. Uh, make sure you put the plate setter in there so it comes up to temp also. We want to adjust the vents just a little bit to make sure that we're getting the optimal amount of air flowing through the smoker. Um, 
and then keep it low, keep it closed. Don't be peeking at it, let it stabilize, guys. So this is the first video we're gonna do with the big green egg. If you guys are interested, we did a video on trimming a brisket. We now have done a video on kind of setting up the big green egg for low and slow. We're gonna tie it all together with the big old brisket cook, guys. So make sure you guys go and find that video. There'll be links to it up here, down there somewhere. Uh, or you could just go over there and subscribe to the channel, guys, and make sure that you're uh, turning on notifications so you can find out when more videos like this are coming out. If there's anything you wanna see us do, do more more of drop that down in the comments below and let us know guys uh, i know there's a million other barbecue channels out there but uh, hopefully you guys can find home here with us at common q and with that guys as always get out there and show those girls some love take care